Eight years ago, my brother-in-law Christian was on a humanitarian trip in Bolivia. While he was there, a family of indigenous Aymara people asked him to be the godfather of their new baby boy. He agreed and participated in a ceremonial first haircut. Earlier this year, I had the opportunity to visit Bolivia. And when I heard this story, I just knew I had to find this family and share with Christian how they were doing. The only problem was that all I had to go off of was the name of a distant village and this photo. Bolivia is an amazing country, offering some incredible outdoor adventures. From its soaring peaks to its biodiverse jungles, there's no shortage of things to see and do here. This video isn't about these places though. It's about a place that few, if any, tourists actually go. In the southwestern region of the country is a high arid plateau known as the Altiplano. It's a rugged region with few trees and endless tracts of barren land. The air here is very thin, at over 12,000 feet above sea level. The elevation and the dry, cold climate make living here a challenge. Yet this region is home to hundreds of thousands of native Bolivian people, called the Aymara. Somewhere in this vast track of wilderness is the person I'm looking for. Just getting here, though, was an adventure in and of itself. Here we are, crossing the bridge between Peru and Bolivia. Here is Bolivia. Hopefully we've got all the right papers to get in. They keep changing the requirements, so we'll see. To make a long story short, the process of getting into Bolivia was a huge headache. We had researched ahead of time what we would need, but quickly realized that the requirements online were completely different than what was actually needed. We walked back and forth between Bolivia and Peru about 14 times in total, trying to get all the paperwork correct. Sorry, it's a bit loud. We're having a fiesta over there. So we went over to Bolivia and they showed us all these requirements that we needed, just like crazy requirements that aren't online at all. So now we're trying to figure out all this stuff, get the forms printed. We're over here in Peru. We'll try and go back to Bolivia in a minute. Crazy times. For anyone trying to enter Bolivia over land the way we did, here's the list of requirements as of the making of this video. I honestly don't know that we would have gotten in without having a local there with us. Luckily, we had two employees from Choice Humanitarian come and pick us up at the border. More about Choice Humanitarian later. Well, we made it into Bolivia. That was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. We got there to the border at 11. We did not leave until 2.30. They asked us for all these different things, none of which was online. We had to go get copies and get all these like bank statements. And just, you would think that Bolivia didn't want tourists to come in because of how difficult they make it. It sure seems that way, and especially the price of the visa. It's expensive. It's like 160 bucks. Guess how much the visa for Peru was? Nothing. Anyway, we are here in Bolivia. We made it. Um, we've stopped right now. We stopped at the ruins of Tiwanaco, but unfortunately it looks like we got here and it's closed. <laughs> it closed at four o'clock. If immigration hadn't taken like five hours, Anyhow, I think we'll get back on the road here in a minute. So, yay for being able to uh, get into Bolivia. I would not suggest doing it the way we did it. Anyway, that's all for now. Bye. Even though we got there after it closed, one of our Bolivian friends was able to sweet talk the employees and get us into the archeological site. Tiwanaku is the site of one of the earliest known civilizations of South America and predates the Inca Empire. Few constructions survive today, but what has survived is still very impressive. Walls of ancient temples as well as monolithic sculptures hint at a complex civilization. The people of Tiwanaku had beliefs that were deeply tied to the cosmos and the land. This is evidenced by structures such as the Gate of the Sun and the Gate of the Moon. The Aymara people today are believed to be the ancestors of the people of Tiwanaku. An Aymara legend places Tiwanaku as the center of the universe. 
it continues to be an important spiritual site of the Aibara people in Bolivia today. After our brief visit at Tiwanaku, we continued on our way towards our final destination. We'd be staying in the city of Viacha. I was surprised at how cold it was when we got out of the car. That night, I definitely had trouble sleeping. I wasn't sure if I couldn't breathe because of the altitude or if it was the five alpaca blankets on top of me to keep warm. Eventually, exhaustion overtook me and I slept my first night in Bolivia. The week went by incredibly quickly. I had traveled to Bolivia with the founder of a nonprofit organization called Choice Humanitarian. Choice is incredible. They organize expeditions throughout the world to help poor and underrepresented communities. Throughout the week, we saw several of the projects that Choice had been working on in Bolivia. We were out in the villages every day. One of the projects we went and saw was a school with a special greenhouse classroom constructed by Choice volunteers. It was awesome to see the kids in such a fantastic learning environment. We visited a village where Choice installed piping to bring spring water to people's homes. It was humbling to see the poverty of the native Aymara, but they were all so happy, especially to have clean water. Of our excursions, my personal favorite was to the village of Kalikachi. Choice taught the people of this community how to build greenhouses using some simple materials and adobe bricks. The villagers prepared a celebration for our visit. We were treated like royalty and gifted ceremonial ponchos and hats. They gave us cheese, lots of snacks, and showed us their impressive greenhouse crops. They even killed a sheep for us, and we were presented with a huge lunch of potatoes and lamb stew. I didn't take much video during our trips to the villages, mostly because I wanted to be present instead of being behind the camera. During this week, everything was new. New sights, new customs, but most of all, new foods. There were some really interesting foods in Bolivia. My favorite dish was definitely fried trout from Lake Titicaca. The most exotic dish I tasted was definitely cuy, or guinea pig. It wasn't that bad, actually. Supposedly, the brown and white ones taste the best. Although we spent most of our time out in the villages, we did take a day to go into the massive city of La Paz. La Paz is really impressive and sits in a deep valley with the massive Mount Ilimani looking over it. Ilimani can be seen from all over the Altiplano and rises to over 21,000 feet. La Paz has a massive network of aerial trams that make getting around the city a breeze and highly enjoyable. We rode them all over town and got to see the city center and have a nice lunch. If you ever visit La Paz, make sure to try the Salteñas. All these trips were really fun, but as the week was coming to a close, I made sure to get on the schedule a trip out to the village of Isco Oco. This is where eight years ago, my brother-in-law Christian had come with his family and volunteered on a choice expedition to build a school. I was really curious to see if we could find the family that he had known. We planned the trip for the next day. The next morning was cold and frosty, but we loaded up and headed out into Aymara country. We had a few stops before going out to Isco Oco, and after what felt like forever, we finally pulled up to the site of the school that Christian had helped build. By the time we got there, school was out. I actually don't even know if they had gone to school that day. It was harvest time, and we found everyone out in the fields harvesting barley. After showing pictures and asking around, we were told that the family in the photo was still living in the village. I could hardly believe it. We drove from house to house showing the picture and were pointed further and further into the distance. At last, we pulled up to a small grouping of adobe structures on the outskirts of the village. A woman with a few children approached us. I instantly recognized her from the photo as the mother of the family. A huge grin crossed her face as we showed her the photo and asked about the boy. She pointed out into the cow pasture where we could see a little kid sitting among the cows. His sister ran to get him and we soon learned that his name was Kevin. I didn't take a lot of video during our visit because I was so concentrated on talking with this amazing family. They were so kind and invited us inside. They gave us jello, which I have no idea how they kept cold, but it was good. We ate and talked while one of the kids ran to get their father from the fields where he was working. The family showed us their large potato harvest, and we recorded this video for my brother-in-law to see. Okay, Christian, estamos aquí con la familia. Aquí estamos. Quiero mandarles saludos. Hola, hermano, cómo estás? Buenas tardes. Estamos aquí en mi casa. Me ha venido a visitar. Gracias por la visita, hermano. Esperamos y también tu ahijadito. Están ya, grande ya. 
<risa> rápido pasa el tiempo y ¿cómo están ustedes se vean solos aquí bien sí. ¿Qué quiere decir? Un saludo. Yo le voy a mandar esto. Sí, pues este es un video está grabando y le voy a mandar. Le voy a mandar. Sí, a tu padrino. Mira, 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 Kevin was really excited about the books we brought him. It was amazing, really. What were the chances that I would be here in Bolivia and be able to find the same family my brother-in-law had known eight years before? I left Bolivia just a few days later, and although I wasn't sad to leave the high cold altiplano where sleeping was painful, I was very sad to leave the incredible culture, the food, and most of all, the Aymara people. Somewhere today, there is a little boy named Kevin running out there on the altiplano among his family's cows. I hope he'll remember me. I know I will never forget him and the adventure of his marvelous country and finding his family. <laughs>